Hello everyone and welcome back to my True Crime with Some channel. Long time no see, seriously. I am so, so sorry about the lack of videos. When I got back from, I was in Thailand and then I got back and <clears throat> I've just been out of swing of things. I have been quite ill. I'm absolutely fine now, I feel fine, but my voice is still very iffy. So please ignore that. My voice doesn't usually sound like this. It's not too bad, but I didn't want to film until it got a bit better, but yeah. Anyway, I'm back and there will actually be two videos a week from now on. So I'm gonna be doing one true crime video and one video on maybe history or anything along them lines because I'm very, very interested in that kind of stuff. And I did want to incorporate it into this channel as well and yeah that's all i really have to say to be honest it would mean the world if you could like comment and subscribe make sure you do comment all your opinions and your thoughts the comments are my favorite part of doing youtube i really appreciate it and if you could share this video you know it would be mean the world to me but we're just gonna jump straight in so i today i'm going to be discussing some royal family scandals which i haven't done anything like this before but i am very intrigued in the british royal family i'm not <laughs> i'm not a fan at all like I, I wouldn't say like oh yay like i love i love the royal family i don't really care about them in that sense i'm intrigued by them so yeah technically i do care about them <laughs> but not in like a i love them kind of way i have always always been obsessed with princess diana and everything that went on between her and charles and camilla i'm not going to be mentioning them at all in this video today simply because they are the biggest scandal and that is a whole video in itself i'm gonna do a whole video on princess diana because i, I love her <laughs> i just love her and i don't even really want to call i don't want to put her in a scandal video because i really don't even think it's a scandal like that's a crime that's a true crime. 100 and million percent. We won't be discussing that today if you're wondering like, huh? Why isn't Diana and Charles mentioned? That's why. <laughs> because they need a whole video. But we are going to just jump straight in with the British royal family scandals. These are all during Queen Elizabeth II's reign. She's obviously dead now. I don't know why I said it like that. Rest in peace, Queen. Lizzie. But we are going to jump straight in. So if you're not from the UK and you aren't really sure what the royal family is, to be honest, I'm from the UK and I'm not really sure what the royal family is. I've always been a bit confused. What do they do? I'm going to tell you what they do, just as a little backstory. The monarchy is the oldest form of government in the United Kingdom. And in a monarchy, a king or a queen is head of state. The British monarchy is known as the constitutional monarchy. So this means that while the sovereign is head of state, the ability to make and pass legislations resides with the elected parliament. Again, still confused me because I was like, well, what do they do then? <laughs> really? And the origins of the English monarchy lie in the Anglo-Saxon settlement of Britain in the 5th and 6th centuries. A long old time ago. <laughs> Very long running. Members of the royal family often carry out official duties in the UK and overseas where the monarch cannot be present in person, such as state funerals or national festivities, or undertake visits to strengthen Britain's diplomatic and economic relations. So <laughs> that's a bit on what they do. I also wanted to discuss reasons of why the British royal family are liked and why they are disliked. Because I feel like my era, my age, my generation, we are kind of all big like, eh, don't really like the royal family do you know what i mean and also i feel depends on the way you grow up a lot of the older generations they love the royal family and it is more of a higher class loving thing but i'm going to discuss why they are liked one reason why they're liked is that they the royal family brings a sense of comfort and familiarity and an emotional attachment which often does not successfully preserve monarchies in other countries like the british 
monarchy has been around for forever and it's the sense of it's part of our country and it, I can see why some people do find that as a comfort. I mean if we didn't have a British royal family I'd be a bit like like you just can't imagine not having one. And while many other nations have overthrown their national regimes the United Kingdom has found a balance between democracy and tradition. Well that's what the people that like them think. And then <laughs> I've got many reasons of why they're disliked. There is a lot more reasons to why they're disliked than why they're liked because I feel like people that like them, they, that is just a simple reason. They like them because they like them and it makes them feel cosy. I don't know, but the reasons why they're disliked, this is not me saying all the reasons why I dislike them, by the way. This is just like things I collected off research or forums of why people don't like them. First up, they live incredibly privileged lives, they are filthy rich, and yet they keep on taking more and more money each year that could be put to better use. I mean, sorry, <laughs> I know. I know it's that thing where it's like they spend so much money, like everyone was moaning about the king's coronation. That was an obscene amount of money spent. And yes, people say, oh, well, it's just like, it's tradition. I'm sorry. There's so many people struggling. That money could go to so much better use. And I do, that is the main reason I'm just be like, oh. But then I see the other side of it and it's just like people like, oh, well, it's the tradition. Another reason is that they play the media and the public. They do tend to do this. It's a known fact. <laughs> another one is they don't work hard. I try, I, it's another thing, like they are royals. They aren't gonna really work hard. <laughs> They aren't and a lot of the younger members of the royal family technically do like they help out at charities obviously i'm aware of that but that is just a thing i read they also are known to hijack any event they attend and they overshadow the real calls if it's a national event the story becomes about them rather than the nation if it's a charity it will just get them in the spotlight, not the charity itself. Apparently that's a reason why people don't like them. I mean, to be fair, I don't really agree with that because surely it drums up interest. It's like influencers promoting, it's like influencers talking about a charity. That's gonna, you know, get more interest. And another thing is that they lobby politicians behind closed doors. And this is them using the exemption from the Freedom of Information Act. They invite them to tea, become friends with them, they have informal chats, they write letters and they make phone calls, and they're supposed to be politically neutral. They also lecture other people on how to live, which is most of the time very hypocritical. This is the one that really annoys me the most. I think that's a lot of the reason why people dislike them. They are meant to be neutral and they're just not. Right, now we are going to get in to our scandals. So our first scandal, we are going to talk about Princess Margaret's love life back all the way down to 1947. Princess Margaret is the sister of our dearly departed Queen Elizabeth II, so that is her sister. Princess Margaret and her love affair with Peter Townsend was one of the earliest scandals during the reign of her sister, Queen Elizabeth II. It was 1947 when Princess Margaret first met and fell in love with Peter Townsend, who was a Royal Air Force pilot and soon to be divorcee, who was 15 years older than her. She was 17 at the time <laughs> and he also served as an inquiry for the king. She's just crazy. A then married Peter met Margaret who was a teenager for the first time while accompanying the royal family on a three month tour to South Africa. His duty was to protect the princess throughout the trip so the two did spend a lot of time together. In later years, Margaret reportedly tells a confidant, quote, we rode together every morning in that wonderful country in marvellous weather, that's when I really fell in love with him. In 1952, following 11 years of marriage and two young boys, Peter officially divorced his wife in order to commit to Margaret. In April 1953, he asks Margaret for her hand in marriage, but they were unable to wed because their romance came at a time when marrying a divorcee was frowned upon and also forbidden by the Church of England. And since Margaret was not yet 25 years old, she actually required marriage approval from her sister, the Queen, and the Queen ultimately refused to give her permission based on the man's marital history. Because that is pretty scandalous back at the time. Like, 
even now for the royal family not as much now at all but back then wow like first of all the age obviously but it was mainly oh he's a divorcee oh my god horrendous however the two did still remain engaged and they did continue their relationship in private on june 2nd 1953 Despite dating in secret for a few years, rumours of their romance first circulated from their attendance at the Queen's coronation following the death of their father, King George, the previous year. Onlookers observed subtle, suggestive exchanges between the pair during the occasion. And per one reporter, Margaret is seen fixing up Peter's shirt, spurring tabloid headlines speculating on this affair. August 21st 1955 Margaret turned 25 making her eligible to marry freely. I found this quite interesting due to amendments made by the Queen and the Parliament in the Royal Marriages Act in light of Margaret and Peter's potential marriage Margaret would now be exempt from the Church of England's rules prohibiting a marriage with a divorcee if she is removed from the line of succession in which she stood third. So at this point she was third in succession. Obviously her sister Queen Elizabeth was first and then I'm guessing it was someone else obviously and then she was third. And let's be honest that's pretty unlikely that you're ever going to be third of successions. You're not going to make it to be Queen Margaret are you let's be honest like well you definitely weren't Queen Elizabeth had the longest reign and exclusion from the succession didn't entail any other changes in Princess Margaret's position as a member of the royal family despite these newfound freedoms Margaret remained apart from Peter for two years whilst he was stationed abroad in Brussels to serve as an heir attaché she told someone called Eden in a letter that she would need to meet him face to face again in order to arrive to her final decision of whether she wanted to marry him or not. October 31st 1955 Margaret announced her official end of this engagement to Peter Townsend. She ultimately decides to maintain her place in the royal lines. In 1960 Margaret married photographer Anthony Armstrong Jones who later became the Earl of Snowdon but they did also eventually divorce in 1978 due to both of them having having affairs whilst married but they did maintain a friendship up until Margaret's death in February 2002. So Margaret, Princess Margaret, Margaret? Princess Margaret was quite the scandalous lady back in her time you know? She was quite scandalous. I mean I wonder what things would have been like if she was queen. Now we're moving on to another event around 1947. So this one's actually about Queen Elizabeth II herself and Prince Philip, her husband, who we all know, obviously, he died a couple of years before Queen Elizabeth did. Queen Elizabeth's father, King George, I think he's the second or the third, well I'm just going to say King George, her father had concerns about Philip as a suitor for his daughter. So the king, at the time he was the king, asked Scotland's Yard's special branch to complete a secret dossier outlining Philip's background, background loyalties and policies. Surveillance officers reported back about Philip's bad language, messy rooms, late night drinking and a Canadian girlfriend named Osla Benning who worked in the naval section of Hut 4 at Betchley Park. They also found that Philip's sister had Nazi connections through her marriages. If that wasn't enough, the king's eyes and ears doubted Philip would be faithful if he were to marry his daughter Elizabeth. But <laughs> Elizabeth had already made up her mind and the rest is history. Let's be honest, they were together literally forever. Daddy King George was wrong. Moving on to 1974. This is a crazy one and I actually discussed this already in my video about Broadmoor Hospital but I'm going to talk about it again because this is a crazy story. This is on Princess Anne and Princess Anne is the daughter of Queen Elizabeth. This is the attempted kidnap of Princess Anne. Around 8pm on March 20th 1974, Princess Anne and her husband of four months at that time were heading towards Buckingham Palace after attending a charity film screening. Anne's lady-in-waiting sat across from the couple in the back of a maroon Austin 
Princess Vanden Plaza limousine, marked with the royal insignia. And in the passenger seat rode her bodyguard, Inspector James Wallace Beaton, a member of SO14, Scotland Yard Special Operations Branch, charged with royal protection. As the chauffeur drove down the mall, which is the road that runs between London's Trafalgar Square and Buckingham Palace, a white Ford Escort overtook and forced the driver to stop around 200 yards away from the palace. A bearded man with light red hair exited the car and holding two handguns charged towards the rear of the limo. Inspector Beaton assumed that the man was a angry driver and stepped out to meet him. From six feet away, this man shot the officer in his right shoulder. A 26 year old man with issues of mental illness, a man named Ian Bull, had rented a car in which police would later find two pairs of handcuffs, Valium tranquilizers, and a ransom letter addressed to the Queen herself. He had typed a rambling note that criti criticised the royal family and demanded a two million pound ransom to be delivered in five pound sterling notes. Ian Bull asked that the Queen have the money stored in 20 unlocked suitcases and put on a plane destined for Switzerland. And Queen Elizabeth herself <laughs> would need to appear on the plane and confirm the authenticity of her signature on the needed paperwork. Now, now, Ian Ball then turned to the rear door behind the driver's seat and started shaking it with Anne sat on the other side. He yelled, open it or I'll shoot you. As the princess and Captain Phillips did their best to hold the door shut, Princess Anne's lady-in-waiting crawled out of the door on the passenger side. Inspector Beaton took the opportunity to jump back in the limo. He placed himself between the couple and Ian Ball, who shot into the car. Beaton's hand deflected the bullet Ian Ball then shot him a third time, causing a wound that forced Beaton out of the car and onto the ground. Chauffeur Alexandra Callender, one of the Queen's drivers, stepped out to confront the gunman. Ian shot him in the chest and he fell back into the car. Pulling the back door open, Ian Ball grabbed Anne's arm as Philip held onto her waist. Ian then said to Anne, please come out, you've got to come. As the two men struggled over Anne, her dress ripped, splitting down the back. Instead of panicking, she had what she later called, quote, a very irritating conversation with her potential kidnapper. And I actually like how she described it as this. So Princess Anne said later on, quote, I kept saying I didn't want to get out of the car and that I was not going to get out of the car. Police Constable Michael Hills, aged just 22, was first on the scene. He was patrolling nearby when he then heard the sounds of the struggle and he assumed that the conflict was just over a car accident. He approached Ian Ball and touched his shoulder. The gunman turned and then shot Constable Michael in the stomach before collapsing he maintained enough strength to radio into the station. Ronald Russell, a company cleaning executive, was driving home from work when he saw the scene on the side of the road. He approached on foot after seeing Ian Ball confront the officer. Ronald Russell later remembers thinking he needs salting. He himself was a six foot four former boxer and he wanted to punish the shooter for hurting a policeman. Obviously he just felt like he'd hurt a policeman at this point. I don't think he knew the, obviously the issues going on around in the princess. Another motorist, a chauffeur called Glenmore Martin, had parked his car in front of the white Ford to keep Ian from escaping. He also tried to distract Ian, but when the gunman aimed at him, he turned to help Officer Hills on the side of the road. Meanwhile, during all of this, Daily Mail journalist John Brian McConnell came onto the scene, recognising the limo was a royal limo, and he knew a member of the royal family was in danger. And what I actually think is quite good at this point is that this journalist didn't just stand there and do nothing. He didn't just take pictures, you know, because he was a Daily Mail journalist. Like, usually they do that. Anyway, this journalist said to Ian Ball, don't be silly, old boy, put the gun down. Ian Ball then shot him. Journalist McConnell fell to the road, now being the third person bleeding onto the pavement. After he fell, Ian then turned back 
to his struggle for Princess Anne. Ronald Russell approached him from behind and punched Ian in the back of the head. While the former boxer distracted the gunman, Anne reached for the door handle on the opposite side of the back seat. She opened it and pushed her body backwards out of the car. She said later on, quote, I thought that if I was out of the car that he might move. And she was right. As Ian ran around the car towards the princess, she jumped back in with Phillips, shutting the door. Ronald Russell then punched Ian in the face. And during this, more police officers were now witnessing this. This is actually quite clever. Princess Anne noticed that the policeman's presence made Ian visibly nervous and she said quote go on now's your chance and he just took off running which I'm sorry I find hilarious like go on princess Anne. Peter Edmonds a temporary detective constable had heard officer Hill's call regarding the attack as he pulled up into the scene in his own car he saw a man take off with a gun through St James's Park. Peter Edmonds chased Ian and threw his coat over Ian's head tackled him and made an arrest. Authorities found over 300 pound in 10 pound notes on him really random. Later they learned that earlier that month Ian had rented a home on a dead end road in Hampshire, only five miles away from Sandhurst Military Academy, which was also the home of Princess Anne and Captain Phillips. When Ian Ball appeared in court on April 4th, his lawyer spoke out about his history of mental illness, but Ian also gave a statement on what motivated his crime saying quote i would like to say that i did it because i wished to draw attention to the lack of facilities for treating mental illness under the national health service tell me tell me your lawyer forced you to say that without telling me your lawyer forced you to say that anyway ian ball did plead guilty to attempted murder and kidnapping and he was sentenced to a life term in the mental hospital broadmoor and that is a high security psychiatric hospital that i've done a whole video on so go check that out but that was just like a bizarre bizarre scandal that's not even a scandal that's like that's more than a scandal now we are moving on to one that i <laughs> i found absolutely hilarious it's not hilarious by the way i'm not actually laughing at these serious things happening it's just like we know it was all okay so obviously something bad did genuinely happen i wouldn't be saying this the queen's bedroom got broken into in 1982. I had never heard of this before and it sounds like something out of like Gangster Granny, the David Williams book. I was so confused. I was like, that is surely made up. Like that has got to be made up. How does that even happen? Anyway, <laughs> a man or a teenager, I couldn't really figure out. He was a young man named Michael Fagan shimmied up the Buckingham Palace's drain pipe in 1982. And this triggered one of Britain's biggest security scandals, obviously. The drunk labourer smashed an ashtray and broke into the Queen's bedroom carrying a shard of glass. It was 7.15 a.m. He'd, he'd obviously been out all night and was just completely drunk. The Queen pressed her alarm and nothing. Her footman was walking the her corgis her overnight police guard left an hour earlier. No one came. So not missing a beat, you know, staying calm. The queen offered Michael a cigarette and waited for backup. Like she literally just, this man did not hurt her. He did not try and harm her in any way, but I'm sure she was petrified. Like he's there with a shard of glass standing there. So she's just like, do you want a cigarette? The maid then turned up and went quote, Bloody hell, ma'am, what's he doing here? Queen Elizabeth took it in her stride, but she was obviously very angry, criticising her security team after Michael was then led away. I just do not understand how this happens. He shimmied up a drain pipe. Like, what was his motive? He was probably just completely hammered. Another crazy thing happened in 1983, actually, to Princess Diana and Prince Charles. So we are mentioning them, but this is a complete different issue. So there was an attempted murder of them, a concert bomb. The Irish Republican army plotted to kill then Prince Charles and Princess Diana at a 1983 Duran Duran concert. I love Duran Duran by the way, I'm just putting that out there. And instructed Sean O'Callaghan to plant a bomb at London's Dominion Theatre. Luckily Sean was an Irish police informer but despite telling his police handlers about the plot, he found himself en route to London with $2,300, a fake driving licence and plans to collect explosives. He wasn't 
unsure how far he should go. Scotland Yard finally leaked the news that an IRA Jack Howe was in town, raising the heat and allowing Sean O'Callaghan to back off without suspicion. Duran Duran's Roger Taylor called it the scariest moment of his life. It didn't really go through, but it was an attempted, it was a plot, like this is crazy, a blimmin' Duran Duran concert. Moving on to the biggest scandal, I feel like, right, like the sickest scandal that's happening kind of right now. Pr well, not right now, it's kind of over a bit now. Prince Andrew. Prince Andrew. Mm -hmm. Prince Andrew is the son, one of the sons, of Queen Elizabeth. His ties with Jeffrey Epstein. We all know Jeffrey Epstein. 1999. Andrew is reportedly introduced to Jeffrey Epstein, who was an investment banker and financer for a mutual friend, Ghislaine Maxwell, the daughter of late media tycoon Robert Maxwell. A photograph that comes to light during Maxwell's 2021 trial for sex trafficking shows her and Epstein at the Queen's Balmoral res residence that year. In the year 2000, Epstein, Maxwell and Prince Andrew are seen at Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago club in Florida. And later that year, Epstein and Maxwell attend a joint birthday party at Windsor Castle, hosted by the Queen, and the Prince throws a shooting weekend for Maxwell's birthday. They were obviously so all very, very close. In March 2001, according to Virginia Guffrey, Guffrey, I'm not sure how to say her name, but Virginia, Andrew sexually assaults her at Maxwell's home in Belgravia, London, and also twice more at Jeffrey Epstein's New York home and at an orgy on his private island in the Caribbean when she was only 17. In December 2010, the prince visits Jeffrey Epstein in New York after he was released from prison for pleading guilty to prostituting minors. They are just photographed walking around together in Central Park what so he literally pled guilty and then he's got out and prince andrew's like oh yeah just off to see my mate in april 2015 uh, allegations that andrew had sex with virginia emerge in court documents in florida related to jeffrey epstein they say she was forced to have sex with him when she was only 17 which is under the age of consent in florida law but buckingham palace denied the allegations november 2019 andrew steps back from his public duties quote for the foreseeable future after a completely disastrous BBC TV interview where he claims that he could not have had sex with Virginia because he was at home after a visit to Pizza Express in Woking and that her description of his dancing with her beforehand could not have been true because he was an, unable to sweat and they had no recollection of ever meeting this lady. On the 12th of January 2022, a New York judge rejects the prince's attempts to throw out the sexual abuse civil lawsuit brought against him by Virginia. On the 13th of January, so the next day of 2022, the Queen strips her son, Prince Andrew, of a range of military affiliations and royal patronages after more than 150 veterans write to describe their upset and anger. Virginia's lawyer insists that she would unlikely to accept a purely financial settlement to end her sexual assault civil case against the royals. The lawyer says that although she does not have a firm idea of what she wants, it is important that a resolution does happen in a way that vindicates her and vindicates the other victims. 14th of January 2022, Virginia requests testimony from Andrew's former assistant, Robert Olney, on the grounds that she has reason to believe that he has relevant information about Prince Andrew's relationship with Jeffrey Epstein. As if a former assistant's really gonna blur that out, he'd probably literally get killed, just saying, allegedly. The next day, Andrew's lawyers ask to question Virginia's husband and psychologist on the grounds that she may have false memories. Can you imagine? Like, they don't want to, the royal family don't want to believe that their precious Andrew is capable of this. They literally start saying that she has false memories. 18th of January 2022, Shirkri Walker, who may have seen Andrew with Virginia at a London nightclub 20 years ago, says she would be willing to provide testimony in the civil lawsuit. Her lawyer said, quote, she remembers the night clearly because she had never seen a royal before that or since then, which is so true. Like, 
obviously she's gonna remember it. It's that you've, you've seen a royal in public, like you, you're you gonna remember that. And also it's not like she's a friend of Virginia, she just saw that happen. 26th of January 2022, in legal filing submitted to the New York court, Andrew denies that he was a co-conspirator of Epstein and that the disgraced financier traffic girls to him and insists on a jury trial. His lawyers reiterate their previously unsuccessful claim that Virginia's 2009 settlement with Epstein shields Andrew from litigation. 5th of February 2022, a date in March, is set for Andrew to give evidence under oath. 15th of February 2022, in a remarkable turnaround, Andrew manages to reach a settlement principle with Virginia in which he agrees to make a substantial donation to a charity and accepts that she, quote, suffered as an established victim of abuse. Huh? <laughs> and in a document submitted to the New York call, Andrew says he regrets his association with Epstein. In my opinion, it's quite obvious that Andrew did this to her. Like, I'm not being funny. Why would she make this up? It would be very random. Plus there was witnesses and like, it's very weird how is that quick turnaround? Like they are the royal family. Let's be honest. A member of the royal family is not gonna go to prison. Moving on to Sarah Ferguson or maybe better known as Fergie. She actually married Prince Andrew in July of 1986 at Westminster Abbey. And when Fergie married Princess Andrew, she received the title of Her Royal Highness and the Duchess of York. Fergie and Princess Andrew announced their separation in March 1992. So it was like a very short marriage. Five months later, the Duchess was embroiled in arguably the royal family's biggest ever scandal at that moment in time when compromising photographs with her financial advisor taken at her holiday villa in Saint-Tropez were published in the Daily Mirror. Now these intimate pictures shot with a telephoto lens as the couple lazed by the pool show Texas Texan millionaire John Bryan kissing and sucking Fergie's toes and the arch of her foot. They also showed the couple kissing and embracing and frolicking in the pool and in one image two-year-old Princess Eugene, Fergie and Prince Andrew's daughter watched on as Mr. Brian kissed her mother on the lips. Never before had a royal been seen in this light. Like this was a sexual scandal. Like this, n this had not happened. Literal pictures of her feet, her toes getting sucked in front of her daughter. It's a bizarre scandal for the royal family, let's be honest. Going quite later in time. So we've got Kate Topless. This is actually really bad. In 2012, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge found themselves at the centre of controversy when a French tabloid called Closer published photos of Kate sunbathing topless. The photos had been captured by a hidden paparazzi while the couple was staying on a private estate during the summer break. The Cambridges took legal action against this magazine, suing them for damages to the tune of 2.2 million. In 2017, a French court awarded Kate and William $150,000, which is nothing to them, let's be honest. In a letter read to the court, William explained why the publication of the images was particularly painful. Why are you publishing a naked picture of her? Like, that is just bizarre. Moving on, now, from now on, we've just got a, a hell of a lot of um, Prince Harry things, because he is, let's just say, wow, the most scandalous of the royals at this present day. First of all, we have Prince Harry, his um, interesting youth. In January 2005, Prince Harry was invited to a birthday party of Prince William's friend. The theme was natives and colonials, and Prince Harry wore the desert uniform of General Erwin Rommel's Africa Corps, or more specifically, a Nazi costume. According to reportings at the time, Prince William wore a leopard outfit with black leggings and their friend Guy <laughs> dressed as Queen Elizabeth, which I just found so funny. Imagine someone dressing up as your mum. Anyway, the point is, he wore a Nazi costume. Harry later wrote in his book Spare, which is a whole scandal in itself, that book, penis is oscillating. Anyway, so he, Harry later wrote in his book Spare that he got the costume the day of the party and that William and Kate encouraged him to get it. He wrote, quote, with time running out, I narrowed my options to two, a British pilot's out uniform or a sand-coloured Nazi uniform with a Swarovski armband and a flat cap. 
I found Willy and Kay asked what they thought. Nazi uniform, they said. I rented it, plus a silly, silly moustache, and went back to the house. I tried it all on. They both howled. Worse than Willy's leotard outfit. Way more ridiculous. Which, again, was the point. Soon after, a photo of Harry in the costume appeared in the sun. And there was major outcry in the UK. What on earth was Harry thinking of, people were saying. A senior royal dressing up as a Nazi for a laugh. If this is his idea of a joke, it went down like a lead balloon with many. The Nazis were responsible for the death of millions. To turn this into a jokey idea for fancy dress is an absolute disgrace. The incident also resurfaced the links between the British royal family and the Nazi party from the war years ago. I mean, it is a bit stupid. Like, I know people did overreact in some ways, but it is a bit stupid. Why would you dress up? Why, when you know you're gonna get seen? It's silly, but yeah. Harry said in a statement later shared by Clarence House, quote, I am very sorry if I caused any offence or embarrassment to anyone. It was a poor choice of costume and I apologise, just nice and simple. Now, moving forward to August 2012, the young prince took a trip to the gambling capital of the world, Las Vegas. On the trip, he took part in a casual game of strip billiards, which concluded with <laughs> Prince Harry nude in a hotel room on the Las Vegas Strip. Images of the naked prince were later published on American gossip site TMZ, at the time, The Atlantic reported that Clarence House had no official comment, but they did confirm that it was in fact Prince Harry in the photos. Also racked up a bill of more than £30,000 and Harry obviously never ended up paying this outrageous bill as the hotel owner, Steve Wynne, waived the bill when the royals went to settle it. So the royals apparently were going to pay, but the owner was like, no. Anyway, now we are moving on to our last long old little scandal. Prince Harry and Megan. Um, this is the couple that we all know. Some love, some absolutely hate. Prince Harry and former American actress Meghan Markle, who's now Duchess of Sussex, began dating in 2016 and then they're married in May 2018. In 2016, at the start of their relationship, issues already began arising. It was at first said that the palace wasn't happy because Meghan was wearing a H initial necklace around her neck and this completely sent headlines into like frenzy. And anyway, the pair then became engaged in November 2017. And this subsequently made Meghan the first person to be a fiance that attended Christmas with the family. When Meghan's father, Thomas Markle, opted not to attend her May 2018 wedding, after he was caught staging photos with the paparazzi, Prince Charles, Harry's dad, stepped in to walk her down the aisle, which I thought was lovely and it's but it is very very sad that this happened with her dad and there also was there's a lot of uproar about Kate and Meghan's relationship however there were lots of things up in the air about the two's relationship there were some outlets claiming that the woman fought about Princess Charlotte's outfit for the wedding William and Kate's daughter there were also reports that the Queen didn't approve of Meghan's tiara cho choice while Meghan and Kate appeared to be on good terms in July 2018 when they attended Wimbledon together Meghan hinted later on that things were tense between the women. Harry and Meghan announced that they were expecting their first child together in October 2018. Three days before they confirmed the news, they both attended Princess Eugene's wedding and the princess was reportedly unhappy with the pair for discussing their pregnancy at her wedding, which I do kind of get. I kind of get that. It just seems like Harry's a bit away with the fairies. Like he just doesn't actually know. What's going on? In November 2018, Harry and Meghan made headlines for moving to Frogmore Cottage in Windsor. Sources said that M Meghan struggled with royal rules. And there were also reports at the time that palace staff didn't trust Meghan, while one staff staffer reportedly said she, quote, comes with a lot of baggage. And another employee was allegedly overheard referring to her as Harry's showgirl which is just sick. Like, Meghan was doomed from the start, let's be honest. Like, it's quite obvious that she was. 2018 was completely plagued with on and off again rumours about Meghan and Kate's relationship. A source said that the Queen influenced the two women to bury the hatchet over the holidays. Meghan revealed in March 2021 that she hit her lowest point when she was five months pregnant with Archie. When Meghan recalled 
of the January 2019 event that they went to, she said, quote, one of the things that still haunts me is this photograph that someone had sent me. We had to go to an official event at the Royal Albert Hall. A friend said, I know that you don't look at pictures, but oh my God, you guys look so great. I zoomed in and when I, what I saw was the truth of what the moment was, because right before we had to leave for that, I had just told Harry that I don't want to be alive anymore that morning, which is just so, so sad. It's like Diana all over again. Megan went on to claim that she told the family that she wanted to seek treatment for her mental health, but she was told that, quote, it wouldn't be good for the institution. Come on, it's just awful. Now, this, this is something that's always really peeved me right off. According to Harry and Meghan, the pair weren't asked to take the iconic photo outside of the Lindo wing where Archie was born in 2019. During their CBS interview sit down in March 2021, the couple also shut down reports that they opted not to give Archie a royal title, claiming that they were given no explanations why their son wouldn't receive a title or the security that comes with it. So keep in mind, their son, they were, they were just never, Archie was not gonna receive a royal title or security, which is bizarre that he's meant to, and they were never given explanation. Meghan also revealed that there were, quote, concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he was born, and what that could mean or look like. What, what, sorry, what? The racism from the royal family, like from the institution, surrounding Meghan and her ethnicity and her skin colour is bizarre. The first hint of Meghan and Prince Harry leaving their working royal roles came in October 2019 when the couple announced that they were taking six weeks off to spend some valuable family time together with their son. They went to Canada and they celebrated the holidays privately. Something absolutely crazy, in November 2019 it was said that Harry and Meghan were opting not to have Christmas with his family, the royal family. While Buckingham Palace's official statement said that the twosome had the support of Her Majesty the Queen, a source said that Queen Elizabeth II was actually disappointed by their choice, which, yeah, I'm sure, but there's a reason they didn't want to have Christmas with them. That is, like, crazy. Harry and Meghan announced their plans to stop working for the Queen in January 2020. Reports suggested that the Queen wasn't happy with the pair going public with their announcement so quickly. Quote, the website took everyone even their communications teams, by surprise. Aides and family members knew the couple wanted to step back, but the public website, which laid out the details of their new half-in, half-out model as if it were a done deal, this put the Queen in a difficult position. The Queen was so disappointed that her own grandchild would heap so much embarrassment on the monarchy and bring all this unwanted attention to his family at the worst possible time. Which I can see, but like, if you wanna leave, leave, you know? William and Kate were apparently completely blindsided by Harry and Meghan's statement and during their final engagement as working senior royals in March 2020, William and Kate appeared to snub them. Like, wow. Harry and Meghan actually didn't travel back to the UK after March 2020 due to coronavirus pandemic, but sources say that they did FaceTime with the Queen, Philip and Charles so that they could see their son Archie. When the couple announced that they were expecting baby number two in February 2021, the family, with the exception of William and Kate, sent a public congratulations. Like, they just didn't say anything, William and Kate. Like, ooh. In February 2021, things took a turn again when Harry and Meghan announced that their royal exit was just completely permanent and the palace put out this statement, quote, Following conversations with the Duke, the Queen has written confirming that in stepping away from the work of the royal family, it is not possible to continue with the responsibilities and duties that come with a life of public service. The honorary military appointments and royal patronages held by the Duke and Duchess will therefore be returned to Her Majesty before being redistributed among working members of the royal family. While we are all saddened by their decision, the Duke and Duchess remain much loved members of the family. Family. The couple subsequently fired back at this statement with their own, saying, quote, As evidenced by their work over the past year, 
The Duke and Duchess of Sussex remain committed to their duty and service to the UK and, are, and around the world and have offered their continued support to the organisations they have represented regardless of office roles. We can all live a life of service. Service is universal, which is so true. They were basically saying like, oh, Harry and Meghan have left, like, oh, they're, they're not helping anyone now. They just want to be American, blah, blah, blah. Like, no, they can still help charities. So the absolutely famous interview. Harry and Meghan filmed a sit-down interview with CBS for March 2021. Meghan said during a sneak peek of the special, quote, I don't know how they could expect that after all of this time we would still just be silent if there is an active role that the firm is playing in perpetuating falsehoods about us. And if that comes with the risk of losing things, there is a lot that has been lost already. Allegedly, William and Kate were appalled by their decision to do the interview, especially as Philip, Harry's granddad, remained in the hospital amid his ongoing heart condition. During the interview, Harry and Meghan gave an update on their status with his family, noting that she checked in during Philip's health scare. Meghan said this during the special. This morning, I woke up earlier than Harry and saw a note from someone on our team in the UK saying that the Duke of Edinburgh had gone to the hospital. I just picked up the phone and I called the Queen just to check in. Just called. Cool. That's what we do. So there's the family and then there's the people that are running the institution. Those are two separate things. It's important to be able to compartmentalise that because the Queen, for example, has always been wonderful to me. So we know that she likes the Queen. In June 2021, one year after their royal exit, Harry and Meghan welcomed their second child, naming their daughter Lilibet, in honour of Queen Elizabeth. In April 2022, Meghan returned to the UK for the first time in two years when she and Harry stopped in England to visit the Queen on their way to the Invictus Games in the Netherlands. One month earlier, the twosome actually opted out on going to a memorial for Philip, who had died the year earlier, which I just think is a little bit, oh, but there's clearly a reason, you know? Meghan had travelled with Harry and their two children to England to attend their first royal event since stepping down from their senior duties. This was the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. However, the couple did not stand alongside Elizabeth on the Buckingham Palace balcony. It's like, oh, you've decided to move abroad, you're not part of this anymore. Well, that is literally what it is. In August 2022, in an interview with The Cut, Meghan further detailed the reasons that she and Harry left the royal life behind. The Duchess pointed to the strict rules about releasing family photos as one example of what made her life in the firm so difficult. She said, quote, there's literally a structure by which if you want to release photos of your child as a member of the family, Family, you first have to give them to the royal rotor. Why would I give the very people that are calling my children the n-word a photo of my child before I can share it with the people that love my child? Which is so true. Like, wow. Just because he is a tiny bit darker. Like, the tiniest bit. It's just ridiculous. Meghan did also pay tribute to the Queen after her passing was announced and in September 2022, Charles became King and he said in a statement, I want to express my love for Meghan and Harry, Harry and Meghan, as they continue to build their lives overseas. December 2022, and now this, Harry and Meghan just will not stop, will they? They just don't stop. The Netflix show came out. It's just crazy. But I think it's actually really good because they are exposing things. Diana would be so proud of Harry. I'm sorry, she would. Anyway, while reflecting on her wedding to Harry, Meghan revealed that she was guided by others not to invite her half-sister's biological daughter, Ashley, to the wedding. Now, I'm not really sure what this meant, but I, when I was researching i think it's because so megan she wasn't in contact with her half sister and that's from her dad's side because she wasn't allowed to invite people from her dad's side because obviously he was staging photos with the paparazzi but like she couldn't even invite her niece like it, it was really bizarre anyway the couple also looked back on what happened with thomas before the big day thomas being megan's father and the subsequent estrangement of them harry said quote of course it's incredibly sad what happened she had a father before this and now she doesn't have a father. And I shouldered that because if Meg wasn't with me, then her dad would still be her dad. 
which is so sad. April 23rd, 2023, Buckingham Palace confirmed that Meghan would not be joining Harry at the King's coronation the following month, saying, quote, in a statement, the Duchess of Sussex will remain in California with Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet. And a source exclusively said that Meghan is a mum first, so while she appreciates the invite, she wouldn't miss her son's birthday for the world. That's because her son Archie's fourth birthday was the same day was the same day that Charles was being honoured in the UK. Which I completely get. Like, that makes sense. That's your son. Charles was apparently sad that his daughter-in-law wouldn't be present at the event because he was hoping that his coronation would be a better chance to connect and maintain healing between them. Now, this is actually crazy. I'm going to end this off with the last thing about Harry and Meghan. In May 2023, Harry... Meghan and her mother, Doria Raglan, were involved in a near catastrophic car chase in New York following the 2023 Women of Vision Awards. A spokesperson for them said in a statement at the time that the trio were chased by a ring of highly aggressive paparazzi. Crazy, isn't it? When you think, what happened to Harry's mum? Mm. Happened to Diana? This just does not sit right with me. It really don't. Anyway, the statement said, quote, this relentless pursuit lasting over two hours resulted in multiple near collisions involving other drivers on the road, pedestrians and two NYPD officers. While being a public figure comes with a level of interest from the public, it should never come at the cost of anyone's safety, which is very true. One day later, Buckingham Palace said that they wouldn't be making a statement about the incident, saying, quote, this is not something we are commenting on. What? Why? Why aren't you commenting on it? You comment on bloody everything else. I find that so, so sketchy. I'm sorry, I do. Are they going to try and shut them up? Allegedly, this is just alleged guys legend i promise anyway that is the end of my video i really hope you enjoyed learning a bit more about the royal family their scandals and i will be doing a video very soon about princess diana and prince charles because i find that very sad and very interesting at the same time but yeah i really hope you enjoyed and everything in this video is alleged so yeah just saying well not everything but you know anyway <laughs> please give it a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it comment down below and I will see you all on Sunday. By the way, I'm uploading every Wednesday and Sunday now, so don't miss out.